We're on the record. Okay. Call the Township Council meeting of uh, February 18, 2020 to order. Posting of notice. Adequate notice of this meeting <coughs> has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Law by filing the notice in the office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December the 18th, 2019, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the Daily Record and the Newark Star-Ledger on December the 23rd, 2019, and was forwarded by fax to other local newspapers and local radio stations on December the 18th, 2019. Council meetings are videotaped and aired on Public Access, Access Channel 21 at 7 p.m. Sundays and Wednesdays and are also available for viewing at www.parsippany.net. Would you all join me in a flag salute? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call. Mr. Cariffi. Here. <coughs> Ms. Grignani. Present. Ms. McCarthy. Here. Ms. Peterson. Here. Mr. DePiro. Here. Also in attendance are Business Administrator Keith Kazmark, CFO Ann Cucci, Township Attorney Jim Lott, Township Clerk Colette Madden, Council President. We have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, March 3rd, 2020 at 7 p.m. Agenda meeting, March 17th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Our regular meeting. Approval of minutes, agenda meeting of 2-4-2020. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Uh, roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, presentations and reports. <coughs> the mayor's not here. <coughs> um, Township Council, we have uh, one replacement for the advisory committee, Mrs. Grignani. Approval of recreation advisory committee member. It's a three-year term for Ricardo Bellesteros. Second. Roll call, please. Motion made by Mr. Car uh, Ms. Grignani, seconded by Mr. Cariffi. Roll call. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Clerk Madden, would you please uh, remove remove the member that is on the committee at the present time his term is up and would you please notify mr belisaros that he is on this committee absolutely will do council member thank you i believe it's t benedetto that's the uh, member that's no longer there that is correct okay i have a statement to read this is in response to the mayor's uh, State of the Town address that he gave on Friday, February 7th. I don't know how many of you that heard that, but his speech was filled with gloom and doom, which he blamed on everybody but himself. He blamed the zoning board. He blamed the township council. He blamed the previous administration. He was setting us up for a huge increase in taxes that he will propose in 2020 budget that he will claim no responsibility for. We made him do it. In the mayor's first term, he inherits many things that he has no control over. So he can blame everything that is not right on the previous council and administration. He is, in essence, on his honeymoon. In the mayor's second year, that budget is his. He is accountable to the community for tax increases, services to the community, and employee morale. In the mayor's third year, we are way past hearing that the mayor is digging out of, of a financial mess that he inherited. First, let's address the mayor's criticism of the zoning board. He correctly points out 
that the Township Council appoints all members of the Zoning Board. He fails to mention that he appoints all members of the Planning Board, except me. He claims that the Zoning Board approves too many applications. He insultingly calls them the Board of Yes. He has proudly recommended that the Township Council pass a Development Accountability Ordinance that would allow any resident to ask the Council to overturn a decision of the Zoning Board. The Mayor's recommendation is wrong on so many levels. First of all, the Zoning Board and the Planning Board are by law autonomous bodies. The Mayor and the Council cannot interfere with any application that is before them. Both bodies have the benefit of an attorney, a planner, and an engineer to assure that the applicant's application is sound and assure that the boards operate within the land use laws and the township ordinances. Both boards consist of township residents who are volunteers and who want what is best for our township. Although the mayor is a member of the planning board, he does not attend any of their meetings. He instead has delegated his responsibility to another. He therefore has no idea how many applications are approved by the planning board. <clears throat> Since I have served on the planning board for most of the past 25 years, I can inform him that the percentages of applications approved by the planning board and the zoning board are pretty similar, by my estimation. By the way, for the 12 years that Mimi Letts was mayor, she never missed a planning board meeting. <laughs> Oh, by the way, um, when Mimi Letts was mayor for 12 years, she had two budgets that were a zero increase in municipal taxes. So that is not uncommon either. Bottom line, the mayor's recommendation is foolish and his ordinance should be defeated. That's the first ordinance on our agenda tonight. Now let's address the financial mess that the mayor refers to. First of all, the hiring practices of this mayor are outrageous. Additional staff, new political patronage positions, and outrageous salaries, some of which have no job descriptions. In the mayor's first year, I calculated $550,000 in salary, pension, and benefit costs for those positions that I felt were unnecessary. This mayor has been critical of the previous mayor for using surpluses generated by the sewer treatment plant and the Water Department utilities, although he has done the same thing. There is a major difference between what James Barbario did and what Michael Soriano has done. Jamie only took the surplus that could be replenished in the following year. Jamie never allowed the utility fund balance to fall below that critical amount. Michael Soriano has disregarded that fund balance to the point that we will need an increase in sewer and water fees. This mayor has also been critical of the Township Council for cutting his budget. He is also blaming us for future tax increases. The bottom line here is fund balance for the current budget and utility budgets is the mayor's responsibility. When the Township Council cuts some expense items in that budget to lower taxes, those expense items do not affect the fund balance. For many years, Mayor Soriano Parsippany enjoyed many accolades from Money Magazine and others touting Parsippany is the best place to live in New Jersey and 13th in the nation. We also enjoyed a very good bond rating. What we hear now is gloom and doom mixed with large tax increases. What has changed? We got a new mayor. And that ends my statement. That's my response to the mayor's uh, address last week. And now back to the agenda. Township attorney. Uh, Thank you, Council President. Um, since many of these people are here for um, the, the Lake Associations, <coughs> maybe we should address 
but uh, those are private organizations. Right. I understand that there have been some concerns raised about some recent uh, judicial decisions involving uh, lake associations. Um, those matters are between private parties uh, and are a function of state law. Uh, mayor and council doesn't have any jurisdiction over those issues. You can still speak, but uh, um, we cannot take any legal action uh, on your behalf, whether you're f for the uh, assessments or against them. Uh, unfortunately, it's their private associations. Council uh, President, I just uh, want to inform the public uh, after that, you guys, as he stated, you can come up to the mic, you'll get five minutes to state your concerns, but, you know, uh, what's been addressed has been addressed here today. And I, Council, Council President, if I may, I just want to go on record that saying that the administration has met um, with two of the lake associations and people on both sides of this issue. Um, we have also been in touch multiple times with the governor's office and with the legislative team in our district uh, to discuss possible legislative solutions to this issue. Um, we have even gone so far as to try to arrange a meeting between the leadership um, of some of the concerned parties with the governor's office, and that meeting at this time is still pending, but we are trying to arrange that in the near future. I have also um, spoken to representatives from the leg associations on both sides of this issue. And I'll just throw this out there, the discussions that, that we have had. Um, those, those homes that were purchased, that there's nothing in their deed, they were not notified that they should be paying dues, um, uh, and, and, that's, and that's the grounds that they stand on. Um, one, one proposal is long-term, a long-term solution is that maybe these associations um, set something up so that when homes are turned over, someone new buys it, they will know that in the future they will be obligated to pay an assessment. Um, no? Well, it's a suggestion that was discussed by some of the pe some of the people. You can still all come up and speak. Okay, Mr. Administrator, was that your? Uh, no, that was my piggybacking off of the attorney's report. Okay. <laughs> um, item D um, under the administrator's Hello. report. Not yet. No, oh. I will open to the public late and oh. at the right time. Okay. Thank you. Through you, Council President, uh, just to bring the Council up to speed um, on the budget process, which you referred to earlier, um, we just finished uh, the annual financial statement for the Township last week. Um, and we are now taking that and facilitating through to finalize the budget proposals process, which we started in October uh, by meeting with the various department and division heads uh, in the township. Um, we have um, already made some preliminary cuts to what those requests were. Um, and I'm hopeful that at the March 3rd meeting, uh, we'll be prepared to present the budget to the council. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess at our next meeting, then, we will set some dates. Everybody bring your calendars. We'll set, we'll set some dates for uh, budget meetings. Right. And I, and I, through you, Council President, I shared some thoughts with that, with the budget schedule uh, with the clerk. Um, so maybe he can even share that with you before we gather for the next meeting. So what I'll do is uh, I'll send an email out uh, tomorrow morning with the tentative dates that were given to me by the business administrator, and then you guys can take a look and... If see what works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, really, very quickly, just want to make an announcement to the public. I uh, do understand there's a lot of people here, but for the safety of the residents and everyone here, we ask that the individuals who are standing, one, not block the entrances, and if you can just wait in the hallway so as to not, just in case if we have an emergency, we're able to evacuate. Uh, but we cannot have you guys standing over there blocking that door. There are some more seats. There, there's more seats people can sit up front here. There are some seats up here. Okay, continuing, uh, Township Clerk, your turn. Uh, no report at this time, Council President. Thank you. Thank you. Township <coughs> Officers, Committees, and Reports? Not at this time. No. Okay. I'm going to get Bids taken on 122.20, Noel West Country Club Irrigation System Replacement Rebid. On 130.20, 
new one boat 1660 CB or approved equivalent for two rescue boats, trailer, and accessories for the Parsippany Rescue and Recovery Squad. Bids to be taken, 21920 <coughs> Greenback Road Safety and Improvements Project, 201920 Reconstruction of Various Streets. Okay, now I'll entertain a motion to open the meeting to the public. <coughs> Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. The floor is open to the public. You can come up to the mic, state your name, and you can speak on any matter. Yes, sign in, state your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Hi again, uh, Walt Wellens uh, from Drumlin Drive in uh, Glacier Hills. I was here at the last council meeting to discuss my water drainage issue. And since then I found out there was a meeting between um, some people on the council and Justin, the town engineer. And I was just curious if anything uh, came of that meeting that uh, I should know about. Through, through you, council president, if I may. Um, I mentioned to the, to the gentleman before the meeting, um, I did have a meeting with, uh, with Justin Lizza, our township engineer. Um, he identified the problem, well aware of it. Um, from there, what our plan is, is in the next 10 days to set up a meeting with uh, the superintendent from the Board of Education along with the building and grounds manager um, to discuss the issue. Um, Justin does have some ideas on how they could maintain it um, and also possibly some infrastructure improvements too that might improve the situation for you and your neighbors. Um, so, and I, as I promised you before the meeting, I will come out before the end of this week, um, walk the property with you personally, and then, uh, and then we'll subsequently set up that meeting with the Board of Ed. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mary Przicki, 273 Marcella Road in Lake Persephone. I'd like to um, just pass out <coughs> um, things to the council. To all of them? Um, maybe we will pass it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll wait until you get those. Oh, but my five minutes is going by. I forgot about that. Okay, um, you know, we've been ongoing with this problem of assessments for the past three years. Yes, we took it to court, and yes, we lost. And yes, I understand that you people can't make any kind of um, decisions or comments or whatever. But I think that we are residents of Persephone and we live in this township and you should be aware of what is going on in your areas. Now, how would you like to get an invoice that's in front of you? How would you like to get that and not know what it is, okay? There'll be people here in the audience who say, oh yeah, they knew everything, but they didn't because there's 2,200 residents in Lake Persephone and of them, only 106 got to vote on this issue of assessments, okay? There's multi, when it comes to economic issues in Persephone, as far as residents, we can go from um, middle income to low income to people who are in need. And you'd see that if you look at your HUD grant applications and you go over to the Senior Citizen Center and find out we have, we have widows here that are under the poverty level, and they get an invoice like that, okay? That tells them that they have to pay $230 by March the 31st. And if it's not paid by March the 31st, you'll get fined on April the 1st $100. And if you don't have that kind of money, guess what happens to you? You get a lien on your little house, and you're making fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars a year. Their incomes are, and they're expected to pay an assessment that when you bought your house, you didn't know about. That's what all the Trenton um, amendments are about. You did your due diligence. You asked the realtor. You asked the associate, the realtor asked the associations. 
I'm talking about Rainbow Lakes too, okay? Same thing. You have your title searches, and you think, I'm moving into Lake Persephone, and I'm moving into Persephone for what? For my kids' better education, because we do have such a good school system, and the fact that it's affordable. And now you get hit with an assessment that you don't even know about. But you were supposed to do your due diligence because it said you have the right in common with others to use the waters of Lake Persephone for bathing, boating, and fishing. And down the line, you might have to pay an assessment. You were supposed to know that from language in 1933 when it's not even in my deed. You did everything you could. And, and the state of New Jersey comes along in, in 2017 and they make this Radburn law and all of a sudden we're a, we're a common interest community. 1933, that word didn't even exist. They came here, the developers in 1933, for one reason. The farms were going bankrupt and they wanted to develop the land. They didn't even know what a common interest community was. But now, all of a sudden, we do, and we are stuck with that fee. One minute. One minute. One <coughs> minute. Do you know how many people come and call me up and come to my house because they can't ups understand that invoice? They don't even know how much they have to pay because it says $430, and it's not that if you take the basic fee. But if you take the basic fee, you lose your constitutional right to vote. You have nothing to say. Nothing. Nothing. And I want you to be aware and maybe help us get to Trenton to talk to the people who are higher up and do something for the people of Persephone in Lake Persephone so that maybe it will be then called the best place to live. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. No, but they should. Interesting. Yeah. It says right here the senior membership is 285. Sharon Jacobs, 16 Ivy Lane, Rainbow Lakes. I'm going to just add to what Mary had to say. Thank you for meeting with us. We need to have a meeting with someone in Trenton. We need your help. I am one of 31, my husband and I, of 31 homeowners in Rainbow Lakes that has a lien on our property. My husband and I moved there 35 years ago. We did our due diligence. I asked if we needed to be a member of the lake. They said no, it was a voluntary membership. There is nothing in my deed, there is nothing in their master deed, and there is nothing in anyone's chain of title that lives in Rainbow Lakes to my knowledge. Right now we are up to $2,000 what we owe because we didn't pay. Attorney's fees, late fees, the liens, we're up to $2,000. We wanted to go before a judge, but what this <coughs> group of trustees did was they changed their bylaws they did not register their bylaws. They did not take us to small claims court. I wanted to go before a judge along with my neighbors. We wanted a judge to decide this, but they did it in an unethical way. We need your help, not just in Rainbow, in Lake Par. This attorney has attacked so many lake communities in this state, but she hit home. Someone in our community, in the trustees department of the Rainbow Lakes community, has informed realtors to advertise us as a homeowners association with a homeowners fee. We are not a homeowners association. But yet on the listings, it lists homeowners association fee. Interesting. So they're following the Predfida law, but they're not. Mm. We don't come under the Predfida law. <coughs> Seniors, widow and widowers, and disabled people. 
It could be any one of you, but it's us. We need you guys and ladies to step up to the plate and help us out because this is disgraceful what is going on. Now it is, the ball is in our court. We have to hire an attorney to go before a judge. Why didn't they just take us to small claims court? They considered us members of their Lake Association, right? They considered us members and we didn't pay our membership fee. Well, we're not members. We were nev never members. Some of our residents were members over the years and then chose not to be because it was voluntary. I have never so much as put my toe in the water. I wouldn't really, but anyway, <laughs> it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> but, you know, we really need your help, all joking aside. We are beyond frustrated. The unethical behavior of this group of people following their attorney's lead is absolutely disgraceful. I don't know what you guys can do for us, I don't know what you ladies can do for us, but we need your help. We have been, doors have closed, have, have uh, shut us in the face more than a zillion times, I can't tell you. We've been to the county clerk's office, we have spoken to so many people, we've been told we just need an attorney. And it's, it's really sad. So, the law that was passed would have helped us, and then the governor really destroyed it. We need your help. Thank you. I'm Duren Patel, uh, living at 218 Marcella Road. Um, okay, you need to sign in. We can speak. For I, you. Did. He did. I did. I did. Okay. Um, so. For years, Lake uh, Parsippany uh, Lake Association act like th it's a private club. You know, when I moved into this township in 2001, when I built my house, 218 Marcella Road, Dominic Tedesco was my uh, contractor, and it was a very nice neighborhood. We moved in. One day, I was with my mom and s going through the lake. I was sitting at the bench or around at the uh, lake, and someone asked me, "Are you a lake member?" I said, "No, I'm not." So then, you cannot enter here. You cannot sit here. This is the impression most of the people must have experienced, right? <laughs> now, now for, y for years, it was a private uh, boys club or the you know, private club. Now, all of a sudden, they run out of the money. I don't, I'm, no one is against here, against the lake. If we have to spend money to maintain the lake, if we have to spend money to retain the lake, we all are for it. No, but no, no, I understand. No, no, I, what I'm trying to say, that you know like it's the uh, lake association act like a walmart you know make a profit privatize and expense publicize this is not fair you know like if it is about maintaining the lake we all for it but it's like running activity swimming uh, lesson these and that spending on their birdies and this this is against and it's not like when your neighbor is nice not saying anything you take the advantage and you know make the expense publicized is not good so whatever the lake participating association is doing it's not good and you as a counselor saying that you oversees the operation zoning uh, planning and everything and now when it push come to show and you have to get involved you just sit back means indirectly you are supporting them when you don't act sometimes no action is action and when you don't take action it means you are supporting them have you wrote a letter to the Lake Parsippany Association and get their statement? Have you got the statement from us and uh, see the, where we can? Okay, let's let's everyone become a member of Lake Parsippany Association today and let's dissolve this association tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. right. Yes. This is the action. Yes. Rather than rather than spending our rather than spending our money after the lawyers and everyone, let's become. We have majority people here. Let's become a member of the Lake Parsippany Association and, and systematically dissolve this association. We don't want to interfere anyone's chair. business. This is not our our S sir. culture or our. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when you speak, speak directly to the council. You cannot. No, I, I'm because everyone is part of that, right? No, but, but so you we don't want we don't want to. I don't want to go along on my story. No, no, it's, I, it's a everyone's story. I, I understand, sir. So but you have to address the council. So what I'm trying to say, we have we we can take this action, but okay, something is working. They are happy with their activity. They are doing their own. Why should we have to bother? I'm not going to take my canoe and uh, ride the that canoe in the in the lake right it's not in my piece of cake it's not in my nature 
we are a workaholic people. We like to go to the work Monday to Saturday, work from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening, come home, relax, and live peacefully. For $400 for me, it's not a matter. But when I retire, when I retire and I have to pay $10,000 for the lake, that is my concern. And I don't want to leave anything bad for my, my kids who don't feel that why my dad did not take action. So I I'm speaking on behalf of all Indian community and everyone that please look into this matter and take action. Sometimes no action is the action and that is the adverse action. And please everyone stand up and be a part of, be a member sir, and sir, let's sir, resolve sir, this. Sir, sir, you're you're out of order. You cannot address the public. You have to address them. I'm so sorry. I would say if you guys cannot help us, we have to take this next step. Be a member of the association and dissolve the association systemically. And that we can do it without fighting and taking a legal action. Thank you. Can I, Council so President, can I make a suggestion that the administration call a meeting with our state senator and our two members of the assembly and establish a meeting for these residents to talk directly to their state representatives? Yeah. Yeah. Council President, if I, if I may, before the next speaker, um, to, the, to the last gentleman's comments, um, to some degree, the township of Parsippany is part of the Lake Parsippany Property Owners Association because today, in my incoming mail, we received an invoice that looks just like this, addressed to the township of Parsippany, because apparently the township of Parsippany owns property within the area that would be sent one of these invoices as a member of the Property Owners Association. So that invoice has been sent over, that has been sent over to Mr. Lott for his review as to how our government agency here uh, handle such an invoice just as is a challenge for you folks here in the audience tonight. Was that a yes on the meeting with the state representatives? Uh, I will be more than happy uh, to take that um, idea back to Mayor Soriano um, and with his approval we'd be happy to facilitate a meeting with Senator Panaccio, Assemblywoman DeCroach and uh, Assemblyman Weber on this particular issue because I do believe as our friend from Rainbow Lake stated earlier uh, this is going to take a legislative solution down in Trenton um, as there was an attempt to do already and was correctly, correctly stated tonight was conditionally vetoed by the governor. Um, but it is going to take a legislative uh, solution. And I just, just from a procedural standpoint, it should be noted um, that any legislative solution would now have to start from step one because we are in a new session of the legislature. That prior bill was introduced, adopted by both houses, mm -hmm. conditionally vetoed by uh, Governor Murphy during the last legislative session. So the process would have to start over again for both the Assembly and the Senate to approve and then the governor to consent if it had the correct contents that he was uh, reconsidered and supported at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. That's a good idea. But it still needs to go to the assembly. Okay, your turn. Karen Blunt, 200 Atlantic Drive, Parsippany, New Jersey. I'm very happy that you now are all a member of the group that we are here. Welcome aboard. And. I I'm a little curious, if you don't pay your 115, are they going to put the $100 late fee on you and put a lien on your property? And not in jest, they want $115. If you're one day late, they want a $100 late fee. I know loan sharks that don't charge that much money. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is absurd. I've been living in the lake since 1976, 4th of July, I moved in. I was a member of the lake for many years with my sons. I was on the lake board. I was part of all the committees, president of more than I can count. I, after my sons grew and moved away, I chose no longer to be part of the, the lake. I wasn't using it. We have always been a volunteer lake. We tried back in the 80s to get the lake to be a, um, have to join, mandatory. It didn't work. It went against our charter. It went against everything that we had. So that was null and void a long, long time ago. The way things are being done now, there's ways of doing things. You can come in and be a bully and say, guess what? This is what you're going to do, and we don't care, our way or no way. 
Or you can come in and say, you know what? We don't have many members. We have 2,200 people that could be members, but we have a lot that don't. Maybe you can give us a hand, pay a little fee, and help us out since you do live here. There are ways of going to do things. They come up against the senior citizens. We have senior citizens, as Mary said, who are in really dire straits. Last year, a senior citizen badge cost $130. This year, one year later, the senior citizen badge is now $285. Well, you get four badges. Well, that's nice, but what if you don't need four badges? What if it's just you? That's more than doubled. Come on. I mean, we don't have to be mathematicians here to understand. That's, we understand there's very little you can do, but we want to make the council aware of what is going on, how we are being bullied, how we are being told what we're going to lean against my house. Are you kidding me? Come on. I mean, really? It, and then to tell us, okay, you get to pay your $115, but you don't get to vote on anything. You have no say. Now, if they collect the money, just 115, not the membership fee, just 115 hundred dollars from every member, that will be 253 thousand dollars. I have no say on how that money will be spent. Oh yeah, that's that's a democracy in its finest. I mean, really. So, and and I have to write on my check. I waive my voting rights? I don't think so. Let's get back to the Constitution. I mean, really. So what, what are, are I assuming that what we're trying to do is make the council aware. We are doing everything legally that we possibly can to do this the right way and not be bullied and blackmailed into joining something that we should only have a volunteer right to do. And we're just asking, we're trying to let you know what is going on across the highway. That there's a lot of people, and, and a lot of us are senior citizens who have been here for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. And now all of a sudden, this is what's happening to them. It's not right. It's not how you treat people. It's not how you get things done. It's bullying. And it's disgraceful. And I thank you for your time. Um, good evening, count, Town Council. Good evening. Thank Debbie Orm, uh, 61 Atlantic Drive. Thank you very much for hearing us this evening. I appreciate that you uh, made the public statement that you can't uh, Debbie, get react, a little closer to the mic. Can't react and uh, make a ruling, obviously, on a, a private association situation. But I appreciate that you're hearing us this evening. Um, I as well have some copies I'd like to share with the uh, town council. Um, you probably have seen the judgment. Um, this went to court and there is a judgment, a ruling. Um, I just have some copies for the town council along with the, the uh, complete judgment. So I'll share that one minute. If I could. I'm sure as well that you're aware that this was a class action suit, that this had been certified as a class action suit. So over the past three years, um, though there were some members of our community who weren't aware of what was going on um, about a year ago and when it was certified as class action, everybody was informed of the situation. So um, it's hard to get information like this um, and something that's different in our community. It hasn't been this way in the past. Um, some of you may be aware that um, the courts have been ruling in favor of lake associations for about 20 years. Um, the Lake Lookover court case was in 2002 where the courts ruled that community members have an obligation to pay their fair share when a community asset benefits everybody. So that was the original ruling that set the precedent that we're all experiencing now. One of the things that the judge noted was that uh, the language in the original deeds that was referenced here this evening, saying that the easement, that the property owners have that easement right to use the lake, even though the language wasn't there specifically to say that you're obligated to pay for it, 
that that language comes with an obligation. And that's what the courts have ruled in favor of over and over and over again. So as hard as this change may be, the courts have sustained this over the years. Um, three years with the court battles and the judge sustained it with Lake Parsippany <coughs> and the easement language is there. So even though people's titles from 1970 or 1980 don't have that specific language or may not have that specific language, if you go back to the original deeds, the language was there and it's been acknowledged by the courts and by many people here as well. So, and I know that um, it's hard, it's hard to hear people upset. Um, there may be 10% of the population here tonight and, and they're angry and they're upset. But there's also a lot of, there's also a lot of people who have been working hard to support the lake for many, many years who believe that it is a valuable asset to Parsippany as a whole, obviously. Uh, water quality, obviously, benefits the community, benefits the property values. If that lake were stagnant or if it were a state park, for example, those, our property values are definitely gonna be harmed in, in the long run. So I know that, I know that you're hearing a lot of heartfelt and upset community members here today, but a court has ruled on this. It's in the long run, once we get through the difficult times and we work out the details, there's no liens on anybody's properties. Nobody's been assessed late fees. They're trying to manage the best they can. It's a new situation for everybody around. It's a new, it's a new situation for everybody. And it's a work in progress. And we're, Guys, we just have to let her speak. We have to let her speak. We have to. We have to. We have to respect and, and, everybody's five and minutes. Herein lies some of the difficulties let, in let, trying let to communicate. Speak. She's got the microphone. Yeah, you have There's to let her speak, sir. Courteous. Yeah, you need to. You need to let him speak. This is whether you agree with her or not. There are some difficulties in communicating, and again, that's also a work in progress. I shared with you some highlighted versions of the judgment. Um, hopefully, you get a chance to read it over. Um, Predfa and what's going on in the state right now, and there's definitely some things to be, that need to be worked out there. Um, but I think the bottom line is, is that when there's a community asset that we all benefit from, we are all obligated to help support that benefit. And we're all reaping those benefits with our property values. You all know that, I'm, I'm sure. And if it was, if there was, if there was, if that lake was not thriving, I can tell you that our property values would be declining. So again, I'm just letting you know that there, are, there is another side of this conversation. Okay. Uh, there is Debbie, another your time's up. perspective as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much for hearing it. Hello. Uh, my name is Jitendra Desai. I'm living at uh, 45 Hamburg Road, Parsipani, or uh, Lake Parsipani area. Thank you, Council President and Council Members, to speak me in front of all peoples and in front of you. Actually, I bought this house last 10 years ago. Uh, so that time, there are nothing to uh, this type of thing happen. And that's, I think that this area is very good. That's why I bought this house uh, in Lake Parsipani. So I tell one story, uh, actually, what happened here. Uh, my neighbor bought uh, one elephant. A uh, couple of years, he treated him well. After that, he think that now this uh, elephant take more uh, expense. So that's why he put his uh, elephant on that uh, uh, in parking lot. And now he told he sent me a notice. And now he tell me that now you have to pay uh, the money for you see the elephant in the parking lot, right? So this this like a lake lake. Uh, association that lake association do same thing because now they think this elephant the lake they can't uh, manage the things that's why they say that if you have seen my lake that's why you have to pay the amount and actually we all in lake parshipeni we are uh, mi middle class people i am working seven days seven to seven i have no time to go to see the lake also and now they are saying that you are living in the lake parshipeni you have to pay uh, the fees and it is not a viable, sir. 
because we are all a middle class people we have survived because you know there are so many other expenses and we have to pay that amount also so when i bought my house that time the new uh, that uh, that home closing that home owner were never given document such as charter document or declaration by law rules and regulation of the lppoa when i bought my house they not told me the relator that membership into the lppoa was voluntary there was nothing in the title search and stated that there was a mandatory assessment fee for the membership when property owner asked relator if membership is in the lppoa was mandatory the re response of the lppoa officer or board of director was that membership into the lppoa was voluntary and not mandatory in fact lppoa membership for the last 80 plus year has always been voluntary membership that's correct so that's all the point and that's why i bought this house but now that lppoa says that now you have to pay every year and every year they want to raise that uh, that uh, fees also so actually i am against of all these things and all all my uh, family members and neighbors also against of this so so i request council president and council member please do something and help us thank you thank you so much so if you could just make sure you just uh, sign in yeah. perfect thank you sir hi my name is barbara seaman i live at 360 halsey road um i've barbara. been here since night I mean, I just need you to speak up a little bit more. I've been here since 1959 and a member of the lake since 1959 until about three years ago when my youngest was 33 years old and I'm buying badges for him to fish and he's a chef. He's never home. And I said, well, you know what? At that, I mean, it was like, you know, 400 bucks. I said, I don't need to put that out. I've done a lot of fundraisers for the lake. I've worked there opening days. If they would have sent a letter and said, the waters are in trouble, we don't have, what is it, $40,000 for the water treatment every year? I mean, what, I mean, that's like $5 a family. I'm sure people would have, or people would have sent, just like our fire department, you, you know, you throw a check in the mail. If it's a good week, they get a little more. If not, they don't but it's just the way they went about it. And I don't think living in the, in the lake, now that we're gonna be a private community or whatever they wanna call us, that we should have to give up any voting rights. And I really would love to know because of now all this money, you know, you can't meet on a Monday night and say they paid, we have to pay this. They're going to have to hire accounting firms. They're going to have to pay taxes. I doubt they're going to be a 5013C. So I, I, you know, I hope they do let all the families know what they're going to do with their 500,000 when they get it all by March 31st. Thank you. My name is Pulkit Desai. Uh, I came to this country when I was 13 years old. Six years later, I'm a in the Marine Corps. Address, please. 98 Atlantic Drive, Persephone, New Jersey. Six years later, I'm in the Marine Corps, and I spent six years in the Marine Corps, and I'm a veteran of Desert Storm. Thank you for So your that time. means. <laughs> so that means I'm here to speak for the people who have no voice. The uh, disabled, financial hardships, senior citizens, and people who are on fixed incomes. The majority of these people that I know have never in their lives dealt with things such as liens. Now when they get liens, the first thought is, I'm gonna lose my home because I can't pay the bill. So the LPPOAA is using <coughs> terrorist activities on these people. They're terrorizing them by saying <laughs> liens. Now, even on people who are on fixed income, they do give to charity. And if they have come to them saying that, you know, we need money, you know, maybe $75, even $100, that's an extra $10 a month, many people would have complied. But they went about it the wrong way, and that is something you guys need to fight for. 
and that's what I'm here for. You guys need to fight for that. For the ones who have no voice, who will have difficulty to pay $100 late fees, and then the absolute terror of the liens, because many people have no idea how to get it off. They think they have to hire lawyers. They have to come to court. Uh, they think it's going to hit their credit rating. Uh, and it, this is not just old people. Even people who are young, who moved to Parsippany a few years ago, good law-abiding citizens, they don't deal with stuff like liens. They, there's a foreign term to many of them. So this is what they're doing. They just know that when people see liens, right away they're going to write that check and wave their rights away. Mm -hmm. And the second part is waving their rights away. That's absolutely unethical. So what if I don't use the lake at all? Uh, doesn't mean I can't have a voting right, but if I do use a lake, and majority of the people in Parsippany just want to walk around the lake, that's all they want to do. You know, walk around the lake, and you see that every single day. And if you ex they're expected to pay $115 a year, and they have no voting rights, that's, that's pretty bad. Thank you. Uh, sir, Anna, did you, uh, Mr. Desai? Uh, did you sign in, sir? I did. Okay, thank you. I'm a little taller. Uh, yes, my name is Chris Savino. I've been here for like 53 years in the Lake Community. I've been here for like 53 years in the Lake Community. Okay, I was I was basically came here was Mr. Savino. If you can just speak Chris? up, please. Yes. Uh, <coughs> I've been here about 51 years in the Lake Community. Address. We need your address, please. Uh, 105 Elmwood Drive, Pacific, New Jersey. Okay. It's uh, recorded. That's why we need oh, it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, just everything is for the record, guys. We're not trying to be just, we just need okay. you to speak up and for the back as well. They don't hear you in the back. I have to say, I take issue with the statement Mr. DiPiero almost said a few minutes ago. Well, at the outset of the meeting. I just need you to speak up again, Mr. Savino. <laughs> Sorry. It's working. I just need you to speak up. Um, I have to s take issue with uh, what Mr. DiPiero said at the beginning of the outset of the meeting, that there's nothing that the town can do, that this is simply a private property matter between private property owners. I disagree thoroughly. I'll tell you why. If the banks of Lakeshore Drive start overflowing onto Lakeshore Drive and in and around the towns and roads and, and bridges and access ways in and around Lake Precipity, you will have a major traffic jam east 30 miles around, okay? Because Precipity is an artery, a hub, a traffic, highly trafficked area. And if the Lakeshore Drive overflows because we have another Hurricane Irene, or we another have another Sandy, or we have another big flood, or another natural disaster, the first thing the LPPA will do is say, whoops, we don't have enough in our funding for to clean all this up. We have to go to the town. And that means you guys will be on the hook to raise taxes and pay for the cleanup and the dikes, the dams, the berms, everything the LPPOA says their assessment, basic assessment fee covers. Well, that should be covered by our property taxes. Okay? This is what we should be paying. It is the, it is the right and the proper role of government, local government included, to fund the dikes, the berms, the dams, everything that regulates the overflow of Lake Precipity onto potentially public highways or public roads that can disrupt traffic and cause property damage. Why? Because you'll be the first persons to pay for all this. They're not gonna do it, all right? They're not gonna take the money out of their pocket to do this. They'll come taxpayer, and that's the elected representatives. They'll ask you for money. And this is the problem we have. The town council has to do something. They have to pass some kind of ordinance that basically makes it redundant for the lake to charge basic member assessment fees. Because I think they should be t we should be paying for this in our property taxes, and our property taxes pay for this. Okay, if that's their justification for basic member assessment, really, that's the role of government, not of a private association elected only by a handful of people, decided by a seven member board, who doesn't, who are not held to accountability for the public. That's rife for corruption. Because who oversees them? Them, they oversee them. <laughs> That's the problem. Moreover, unlike that the uh, <coughs> local media, the Daily Record, the Star Ledger, is going to scrutinize them very carefully. 
You guys get scrutinized. Everything you say is do is on public record. I trust you people to raise the taxes necessary to pay for that public space, and that's a public space. If we get on overflow onto Lakeshore Drive, if we have a natural disaster, that is a public space. And you have the right to ask the taxpayers to pay for that, okay, for the maintenance of that, so we don't have to ch have a private club charging a ass mandatory assessment fees for the privilege of operating this lake. Sir, one minute. In conclusion, I take kind of exception to the fact that there's nothing the town council can do. There's a lot the town council can do, okay? Uh, if not through direct ordinance, uh, definitely for their influence through rec elected representatives at the state level. Um, we, a lot of people here don't have a voice. They're not politically connected. They don't have a high, fi high fancy attorney working for them, whispering in the governor's ear saying, hey, psst, change this law. That'll work. We need you. Thank you. Hello, council member. My name is Niral Patel, and I live in 42 Essex Road, Lake Precipiting. I came to this country when I was 17 year old, but since then I've lived in Lake Precipiting or Precipiting for my entire life. Um, what I have earned, what I've done, I've done everything on my own. So now I decided to move in Lake Precipiting. I bought a house, and all of a sudden I get hit by this invoice saying that you have to pay this hidden fee in a fine print. Uh, I just want to bring to your attention, we did some research uh, on this so-called uh, attorney. It's actually not an attorney, it's a consultant to this Lake LPPO member. We've done research that this person has actually gone to nine or ten different Lake Association and she has turned this into a business for herself. So this Lake person is just one of her projects. Um, and I also have done research that this person is also a member of legislator where she recommends making the rule laws. So now this person is recommending making the laws. How is it helping us in Lake Persepeni fighting with this person? So we really s ask for you, your help to take this to senator or even about senator to a governor. We need to be heard this time and heard in the right way. So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Did you sign in? Yes, I did. Respected council members and council president, uh, I'm just going to talk like a kid because I feel like a kid right now. Name and address. Please. My name is Sushil Pongorlekar. I'm from. I'm. I live at 43 Everett Road. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, once, uh, means it was said that we. It is a private property and it is between you and the other person, and we don't know anything. This is like I never heard this from my parents. When I had issues, my parents intervened, intervened for me and they solved the problem with any third person. We look towards you since we elected you and we look forward to you as our parents. Please don't disown us. There, is a, there are so many places where it is written, Parsifani, a place to be. Please do not make it a place not to be. That's all I would say. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Howard Wren, 12 Dayton Road. The concerns I have is that who's to say that this fee doesn't increase every year? They can make it as much as they want. There's no oversight in how high, high they can make this. The other thing is we have elderly people who are really concerned who don't even have the money to pay this as it is. We don't know how high this fee is going to go up. Some lake associations are paying thousands of dollars every year. And, uh, you know, and then the other thing is they want us to pay, but then we have no voting rights. We can't say anything. So even though we're, our money would go to the maintenance of the lake, then they have a higher tier membership that goes to the recreation. They're trying to prevent us from having any say in anything. 
They just want our money like a cash cow, but then they don't want us to have any rights. We want to be able to at least say, hey, if we're paying you money, like, we should be able to discuss where the money's going, you know, and get, get some kind of insight about what's going on. They can do whatever they want, and they want, they want our money, but they don't want to include us in anything. So that's my, that's my major concern. But thank you. Uh, Howard, uh, excuse me, uh, can you please uh, just sign in? Oh, sure. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ha no. Has the association reached out to other towns who have this problem, who have this issue? Are there other towns in, in New Jersey that have this yeah. issue, and oh, have you reached yeah, out yeah. to any of those? Other people will be able to probably speak Absolutely. better than me. Okay. So